So we've lost Ashley again. Freaking Sadler apparently can control people like, uh, I don't know what the fuck to call it. But he can just sort of control them. Well, I mean, obviously he can control them. All the Ganados are under his control. But they seem to have some, like, either it's mind control, and that's just controlling their body, because they all seem to be, like, willingly following him. I guess that's perhaps the religious aspects of it. Because I was always thinking about, like, why the hell does Sadler need to exercise control over them in the form of this religion, this cult that he's got going on here, considering the parasites itself, parasites themselves are quite capable of just controlling someone's actions completely. So why does he need the religious aspect? Is he like a true believer? Does he actually think that the religion that he's um, preaching to them is legitimate? Or is... It's just the extra little bit needed to get the people willingly on board. Because Ashley was, although the parasite isn't completely mature in her body yet, the Ashley was capable to an extent there of resisting him. She shot those two, those two clover shrouded Ganados, and the gun jammed so she couldn't kill Leon, but she was going to. But the difference, of course, here is that How you doing? You survive that? All right, come on up. I, I got a present for you. <laughs> Love grenades. But it's not just, like, the physical control, though. These, the, especially the ones in the village, are definitely, like, it seemed like they're willingly following him. So it seems like he has both a physical control over them and a kind of emotional control. Which, if that's the case, what the hell does he need, um... What the hell is he planning on doing with Ashley? If he has to turn her basically into a zombie in order to send her back so she can infect her father, how does he expect that to work? Without, like, indoctrinating her into her, his religion. Alright. But whatever, I'm overthinking this. It's a fucking video game. See, Sadler... What is, what, who does he look like? Hold on. The guy, the Sadler in this is portrayed quite a bit differently than he was in, quite a bit differently than he was in the original game, of course, because fucking weird. <laughs> Sadler was a really goofy motherfucker in the original game. Of course, all of the villains were, and the entire story was goofy as fuck. So, it doesn't... Uh, of course, uh, Sadler's going to be goofy as well. There we go. Handgun ammo. But this version of Sadler seems like an uh, antagonist that I can take much more seriously. And he also kind of looks like Peter Stormare, in my opinion, anyway. I don't know who he was modeled after. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk more about Sadler, though, as we get see him more. What we have now, though, is we have an impending confrontation with uh, this goofy other motherfucker. Jeez, uh, what the hell is his name? I'm blanking on his name right now. Oh, got nothing in there. 
Where the hell do you keep coming from? Welcome. Well then. What can I do? You crossing your T's, dotting your eyes? I got all the upgrades that I'm really interested in. I never seem to have enough ammo to have more than one magazine's worth for the assault rifle. So why bother upgrading reload speed? Don't tell me what to do. I'll get myself killed if I want. Krauser. That's his name. Jeez. How did I forget that? Yep, we're definitely in a battle arena. I've been waiting for you, uh... Rookie? Oh, worried about the girl, is that it? <clears throat> That's just like you. You always had poor judgment. <laughs> but if you think I'm gonna let you out of here uh, alive, you're even more naive than I thought. You can't save her. You can't save anyone. Give it up, Krauser. Being a lackey for these maniacs won't bring your men back. And what the hell for? Revenge on the government? You think they would want that? Revenge. You think I'm doing all this for revenge? Isn't that what this is all about? See, in that jungle, I had a revelation. The most important thing in this world is pure, unadulterated power. Those Illuminados have given me that. You know, you were always an asshole. <laughs> but at least you had some kind of code. Some honor. And look at you now. Enough reminiscing. Move out and draw fire, soldier! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, going forward, there's going to be a little bit of a change in the format of this show. I unfortunately screwed something up while I was recording this episode. I'd went the entire um, video series playing a kind of a live commentary, playing the game while I have a microphone in my face, and I'm giving the commentary that you're hearing. However, when I reached this boss battle, I shut the game off intending to come back to it later, and a couple of days later I went and I um, got back in and started recording, but something went wrong and the audio, my commentary audio, wasn't recorded at all, so it's just video. <laughs> so I gotta go and edit this in after the fact. So what you're hearing from now until the end of the video series will be me doing a post-gameplay commentary, so it's probably gonna sound a little bit different and I'm not going to be able to line up like what I say so much with what's happening on the screen because you know, just the nature of the way this works. So this knife fight was something that, well, you did kind of have a knife fight with Krauser in the original game. It was a quick time event battle. So it was, oh my god, I hated it so much. I freaking hate these forced quick time things. But... It was something I had to try a few times in the original game in order to get through it because I just wasn't prepared. Like, while watching Cinemax, I sometimes I'll put the controller down. Fortunately, this version of the game eliminated that aspect. And then when you got to the fight with Krauser here, and I guess it was similar to what we're looking at here. Although I think maybe the scale of the battle, like in the environment, was smaller in the original. So there's less, uh, there's less moving around, engaging, disengaging, and re-engaging with Krauser as you move. This version of... Oh, there he is. <laughs> Came out of nowhere. <laughs> Maybe if I kicked him into the, uh, the lasers. Dude just ninja away. He just literally disappeared, too. Like, he didn't turn and run or anything. Like, the flashbang wasn't enough to obscure our vision enough, so he just disappeared. 
I don't think I was supposed to see that. Nope, oh, bear trap. <laughs> this version of Krauser, I would have to say I actually sort of have less appreciation for this version of Krauser than I did for the original. Krauser in the original Resident Evil 4 was just kind of a character that appeared about halfway through the game or so. And you're supposed to have had some connection with Leon, but it wasn't really fleshed out what that was. Talk about the idea that Krauser was somebody that Leon had thought was dead. And he just, uh, and suddenly Krauser shows up. And it's hard to make those kind of like emotional connections with the player because, you know, as much as you want to harp on about how Leon and Krauser have this history, it's not a history that we're privy to. So, how the hell were we supposed to... Oh, there, that worked. Good job, Leon. <laughs> how the hell are we supposed to give a damn? Like, oh, Krauser's alive! Great, wait, who, who's Krauser again? Oh, a player in this game that we just met? An, a, a character in this game that we just met? So, as the series went on, the Resident Evil series went on, they started, like, fleshing out a little bit of Krauser's story in what... Um, what Leon and him went through in the past. And, like, I guess it makes a little bit more sense now. But then they go and they make this game. And they change Krauser quite significantly. In the original game, he just sort of appears out of nowhere. He's this big, gruff-sounding dude. And he is an agent that Wesker inserted into um, Sadler's little cult here. And... He wasn't really trusted by Sadler, but he was in position enough to be able to do whatever the hell it is he's trying to do, get the, the Plagas parasite. And he was working with Ada. The two had a little bit of a little bit of animosity between them, but they were supposed to be working together. And then you fight him and he's over with. <laughs> that, that fight gets over with, and like, okay, moving on. It's weird that this got jammed into the story. But you know, it was what it was. Now this version is different. Krauser is a true believer in Sadler's weird nonsense cult stuff. He isn't uh, he isn't working for Wesker. As far as I can tell, he doesn't know Wesker exists, which is a pretty substantial change to the story. So he's not working with Ada. He is just one of Sadler's minions. And he's a true believer, but he's sort of informed by, like, almost being killed, or, uh, influenced by the fact that he was almost killed, and the stuff that Leon was talking about, like, oh, how did you, uh, how did you survive, all that kind of shit. And he's like, oh, I survived, and I realized that I'm not, he's not trying to get revenge, he realized that, oh, the one thing that he really wants is power. Bear trap there. And he thinks that, like, oh, Sadler's got power. Sadler's got this cult. Sadler's got this parasite. Sadler can do all sorts of shit. Power is what's really important. So he's... That's what he's obsessed with. I don't know. Not, maybe not the best motivation. Uh, they're trying to make him a deeper character. And I get that. That you want to have deep characters. You want to have... You want to have these people like come across like they're more significant even minor characters like Krauser be more significant and in a sense that would make sense you kind of want to make give the kind of illusion that there's a lot more depth even to the less significant characters because it gives you the kind of perception that the world is bigger than it is but, in, but in other times, you know, sometimes side characters really do just need to be side characters. And it was okay that Krauser wasn't that deep of a character. Something else I'm not a particularly big fan of is the, is the sound of his voice. He has this kind of... Uh, he had this kind of weird, stereotypical, deep, like, uh, I'm Krauser, I'm gonna kill... I'm, I'm doing a terrible impersonation here. But I think you understand what I mean. The sound of his voice sounded like a dude that was the size of a brick shit house, and now oh, down I go. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> okay. He sounded like he was built like a brick shit house, and 
he sounded like he was just like, oh, this is exactly what you'd expect a guy the size of a Volkswagen to, to sound like. Now, this version has got this kind of... I don't even know what he was trying to sound like. He sounds more weaselly than badass. Like, okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> He's not supposed to be an important character anyway. The knife mechanics are a little bit weird. Here's the one of the problems I'm always running into with these game commentaries. Is sometimes the gameplay segments do go on for longer. <laughs> longer than I'm comfortable talking about them. Dude, he just freaking appeared behind you. I know he's got, like, mutant crap in him, like T-Virus or whatever, but he teleported. Motherfucker teleported. I know Wesker teleports, too, like some weird nonsense, but come on. Let's try to have at least a little bit of grounding here. Are we done here, Krauser? I told you. Again. And again. You're too soft to do what's necessary. That's the difference. Between you and me, Rookie. Time to finish your training. I like how it can so easily just transition from cutscene to gameplay. They have the in-engine cutscenes where something that started to become really popular in like the PS2 era. But we've got to the point where it's not only just like... There was for a long time this kind of thing where you'd have two versions of a character model, one for the cutscenes and one for the gameplay. Cutscene one would obviously have more detail, more articulation and the bone structure and all that kind of stuff. But really, we're kind of in an era now where that's not really even the case anymore. Like, you had Leon there just, like, moving around and stuff. And I've modded, I've created mods for the Resident Evil games, and there aren't multiple character models, or if they are, there are not many of them. Sometimes you might see, like, a second copy of a character model with one minor specific change to them just to, like, make it easier uh, for the designers and all, but the character model that you're seeing in the gameplay for Leon is the same character model you're playing as, and allows these really smooth transitions from cutscenes to gameplay. So, like, the camera's moving around in the cutscene, and then it just takes position behind the character model, and now you're playing the game. It can get a little bit awkward if you're not used to it, because you might sit there and stare at the screen for a few seconds waiting for something to happen, and you realize, oh no, I'm playing a game now. I guess the first game I'd really seen that happen with was Metal Gear Solid 2. The cutscene happens, and then it backs up, and then the game starts, and I sat there for like 5-10 seconds or so, then, oh, 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 okay. <laughs> of course, it's even better implemented now. I mean, that was awesome right there. Shit! Training's not done. Last lesson starts right now. Nah. Time for the teacher to be taught. Oh, such confidence. Bring it 
rookie. Wonder if Krauser has the ability to sort of like unmutate his limbs and go back to looking like a normal person at least. Because it would really suck if he was just sort of stuck this way for the rest of his life. <laughs> I mean, in the other Resident Evil games, you see monsters mutate as time goes on or they take damage or something like that. But you never see them sort of regress back to the way they were. And this mutation seems to have been... He's able to do this at will. So either this is sort of like some weird act of desperation that he is... Uh, like, oh, I gotta mutate so I can kill this guy, like, regardless of the unintended consequences of that mutation. Or it's just something that he can, uh, he can undo later. It's so weird that a uh, spinning back kick is going to do less, or do more damage than shooting him in the face with a shotgun. <laughs> really plowing through my healing items here. I don't have any more, so I just gotta... Pull out my, uh, pull out my magnum and just fuck him up. Didn't take any damage there. Wow. There we go. That did it. You'd have known that once. I didn't know. Yeah, you did, Major. 